Hello and welcome to Goal with the Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. A special episode of Go with the Heat this week. This time we are doing our season two breakdown of the one and only Miami Vice. We finished season two. We're getting ready for season three. And yes, we took a week off last week, but we are prepared to give our final thoughts on this. And then quickly, as Melissa's waiting with bated breath for us to get to season three. I was disappointed. I wa- I thought we were starting this week. <laughs> I was like, dang it. <laughs> I'm not, not going to lie. I'm ready for season three. So, <laughs> so we're not going to have any check-in on to see what's going on in each other's personal lives because we're just going to dive right in and give our thoughts on this fantastic season that was season two of Miami Vice. So let's go talk about our favorite moments from this. All right, guys. So we kind of have a, you know, we're going to keep it loose, conversational. We're not... <laughs> not ha- confrontational. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to talk about our favorite guest stars, our favorite episodes, and then we'll do our favorite music from this season. Nothing fancy here. We're just going to dig in and talk about season two. And so what I want to start off with is just our general thoughts on season two and what some of the themes or some of the stuff that we liked or that we didn't like, maybe some stuff that we noticed. Uh, And I'll kick this off. And I'll say that at the beginning of season two, because we kicked off with the prodigal son, it was such a great episode out of the gate that I was ecstatic season two, especially with it being a feature length episode right out of the gate for, for the prodigal son. And then we had some misses, But man, did season two live up to the quote unquote Miami Vice. Everything took place on a yacht (laughs) and so many hookers got killed. (laughs) And that same really big white house with that pool that was Mm -hmm. on the on the water. That was the same house and everything. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And they really kept up the game when it came to just guest stars. I mean, it's just across the board. There was just every episode. There was like three or four people who you're like, I've seen him in stuff, you know, or I mean, they went out and got basketball players, race car <laughs> drivers, fast cars, <clears throat> lots of fancy cars to drive around in lots of fancy places and uh, like flashy people wearing the clothes. <laughs> flashy clothes. Yeah, and, and I mean, musicians, you had the Nuge, you had Phil Collins because you just can't shake him. You just can't get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> they tried not inviting him, but he just uh, showed up on set. So yeah, they had to put him in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heck, we even had a magician. <laughs> <laughs> the the dead hooker angle. That <laughs> That was, that was a, a prominent a- feature in season two, though, because like when Melissa, when me and you were talking, I was like, what episode is this again? It's like it's the one where they where the hooker gets killed. I'm like, wait, I think there's like six or yeah, seven it's, of it's those episode episodes. Where they're trying to kill the hooker and you're like, OK, but which one? <laughs> which episode? I'm like, oh, no, it's this one. I got to give you credit, Dominic. Like, that was a smooth transition. Let's go from magicians to dead hookers. <laughs> Well, they are kind of no, one in the same. No. I don't you know. know. Hey, Gillette, you know, he does a lot of work in Vegas. He may have killed a few hookers in his time. I don't know. Hey, I, all I know is that if I'm going with a dead hooker, a magician might be on my short list of phone calls. <laughs> exactly. That would be true. <laughs> And what's always true is that if there's a hooker in an episode, that means there's a solid chance that Sonny's going to fall for said hooker. Hey, <laughs> Tubbs does his share of hookering too, all right? Wait a minute. Tubbs is the one who brought an actual hooker back to the safe house and tried to save her. Hey, that's that's a topic that we talked about a lot in this season is that the safe house is not is not is neither safe nor a secret because they or, like keep bringing people back I to it. I thought we were going to talk about how Tubbs is like Captain Save-A-Ho. <laughs> <laughs> brings back every every like stray one he finds he's like oh i felt so bad for you i'm gonna bring you back to my house and then i'm gonna end up tied up on a bed but hey what has to happen but yeah but i agree with Dom that the safe house is neither safe nor an actual house or, no. or a normal house they're all weird <laughs> that one in the episode where Tubbs is tied up to the bed that looked like a mansion first it looks of all. like the y like the, <laughs> the indoor pool with the y <laughs> yeah remember like why is yeah. there why is a bedroom in the middle of the living room there's like a mm-hmm. bed in the middle of the living room right next to the pool like what if you get up to go to the bathroom and you fall in the pool because you're like disoriented <laughs> you just go man you just go i guess <laughs> you uh-huh. just go <laughs> yeah, and, and then and, and then in free verse we had that that safe house where you can just like drive your boat up you know? <laughs> yeah that seems safe. F- for the killer on the go <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> for the killer with a speedboat. This it, is for your uh, convenience. Yeah. I think since you mentioned Freeverse, that's an episode that I don't think any of us saw coming. You knew, Melissa, because you've seen the episode before. Yeah. But if you're coming into it fresh, to think that there's a cop show that's going to feature a poet. Like, that just came out of nowhere. And I'm hoping no one's got it on their favorite list. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say. <laughs> the other thing that I noticed, or not necessarily that I noticed, but the other thing that was common in this, it was like a three-episode stretch for this, where people love to commit suicide right in front of Sonny. Poor Sonny. He doesn't do anything to deserve that kind of stuff. We, like, in The Fix, he it ends with, uh, with a suicide, and then the next episode Starts begins with a, su- with a suicide. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he doesn't even try and stop just... him at this point. He's like, "Nah, don't do it. It's not worth it. I don't want to fill out all that you know, paperwork he, again." Yeah, even in Freeverse, I mean, the guy was it was all drunk in that one scene, and he mm-hmm. was wanting to kill himself. It, you know what? The other d- disappoint. I guess I would say disappointment for me and John. I think you would you would echo this is that we started off so strong with Castillo and then he just slowly disappeared until he was just like the person that reviewed everything before people went out and did stuff. He was, I mean, we had Bushido. It's a Castillo only episode. And then he just slowly disappeared the rest of the season. Yeah. He just became a background character. And that was so frustrating because like the further the season got along, uh, got along, he went from being like mystery man, ninja to being (laughs) like the boss from office space. (laughs) (laughs) Who I bring up because Gary Cole is fantastic and should have got the job as uh, uh, Crockett. Uh, No one wants to have sex with Gary Cole. So sorry. I I don't know. He was pretty good in in, in his episode. He he was. uh, I mean, but it's proved in office space that no one wants to have sex with him, right? Like he's all sweaty and gross. Sorry. I don't see anyone lining up to go to his yacht to sleep with him. Um, excuse me, but does Gary Cole have an album? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Don Johnson has that and much more. <laughs> you know, for a vegetarian, you'd think you'd be more open to tough music. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say at the end, this was a great season. And I can totally see why there was my Vice had grown to be so popular at the time. And it was, and they decide in season three that they're going to move it on Friday, the time slot on Friday. They're going to move it to compete directly with Dallas. Which it was that big. It was a mistake, though, to move it. It was. It was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they well, did. I mean, anything going up against Dallas. I mean, come on. And it made me have to choose between Dallas and <laughs> Miami Vice. What kind of crap is that? <laughs> you you know, was, as was right an after avid they TV shot JR. Watcher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was, that's terrible timing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, as an avid TV watcher, I can say that is always the biggest mistake is that these networks will move a show where they're doing good in a time slot and they'll move it to a different time slot and it will just crumble. It's a little uh, bit different now, too, right? Because with DVRs and streaming platforms, stuff like that, you don't you pick the show that you really want to watch knowing that you can watch the other one later. In 1986, if you don't catch the most recent episode of Dallas, which is the Who Shot JR season. Yeah, that, then that you don't get to watch up, it. Yeah, then then you don't get to watch it. <laughs> Who knows when you'll ever be able to see those episodes. Mm-hmm. They might be gone forever. They didn't do it like Miami Ice would do with during the summer and, re- and rerun it. Mm-hmm. Dallas wouldn't do that. They would just... Like, you just have to wait. Yeah. Have you guys ever looked at some of the episodes when they re-aired? Sometimes it's like over... It's like a year or two later. Even for Miami Vice. Mm-hmm. And they were groundbreakers in mm-hmm. that by running the reruns. Also, the reruns, they would cut stuff out of them and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't be the full things. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah, in shows syndication, they run more commercial breaks. Maybe that's why they went out and got Dick Wolf, who would eventually become the godfather of police dramas. True. You know, the show, we'll talk about it when when we get to the end of this one, about some of the, some of the stuff that I'm looking forward to in season three. But the show does make a decided turn under Dick Wolf's reign. And so you're competing with Dallas and it kind of changes. But here in season two, it was high life to the max. Everyone had yachts. Everyone had mansions. Everyone had fast cars. Everyone was like, it, which is also surprising. Like, man, there's a lot of giant drug dealers in Miami. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and a lot of hookers. And no one cares about either one of them. <laughs> no one's actually doing anything about this. <laughs> so I think now's a good time where we can start talking about our favorite guest stars. 
because there's, as you mentioned, John, there it is chalk full of guest stars and believe it or not in season three there's going to be even more it's the guest starriest season of miami vice i will say it's the echelon of guest stars because there's a lot of big names Mm -hmm. big 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 names but this season was no slouch there's a lot of names and a lot of people that caught us off guard and so i will kick off our first guest stars just because i feel like i have to so i i feel like before we get into the guest stars i think we need to say goodbye to a regular character who we have grown to love because we will not see him next season no Um, no we will pour one out (laughs) i won't (laughs) yes i'll drink one up (laughs) and i don't have to see him anymore i'm kidding no i'm not kidding but (laughs) so yes we're gonna say goodbye to nougat the Nook Man lamont in season three he will not be back in season three we will be 100 percent izzy because that also means that Ample Annie and our mechanic, um, the uh, what's her name? <laughs> we both thought. Hold on, I'm looking right now. <laughs> our mechanic friend, she's not going to be back in season. She's not back anymore either. So we are down to just Izzy. Not saying that's a problem. Don't but- you say bad yeah. things about Izzy? I'm like, I will not. I will miss Charlie Barnett and his antics and his mm. crazy outfits and palling around with Captain Hook and <laughs> all of the fun. Yeah, because we won't get Noogie back until season four. And then even then, it's a kind of they throw him in for one last time in yeah, the show run before, long, he's, um, before like, he's gone forever. Performance for him in that mm-hmm. episode either. So, yeah, yeah, this is the end of the line for Noogie. We had so much fun. So. <laughs> so many people were mis- were mystified by our love for Nogi. Um, me on top of yes. that list. I'm like, oh. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Nogi. We will see you in probably about a year. <laughs> yeah, um, that's about right. <laughs> briefly. So. And you'll be disappointed. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. So now I feel like we can start guest stars now. So, of course, I'm going to begin our. Because we're going to count up three, two, one. That are, so our, we're going to hold to the end our favorite guest stars in gotcha. season two. The I'm going to kick off, though, because I have to mention him right out of the gate. He is in everything, every episode. I have to mention Phil Collins as being one, one of my favorite guest stars. Of course, not just in every episode, but as Phil the Shill in episode 11. To fill the show, a supposed slick con artist that <laughs> hits everyone up for the same dollar. It wasn't amount. Really that slick, though. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like Phil Collins in another life would would have been a fantastic game show host. Though. Oh yeah, I think so too. I do. I just like that in that episode, he is the best con artist out there, but then falls for Izzy being an interior <laughs> designer. <laughs> hey, maybe Izzy is the best con artist out there. It also made me start to realize that why does Switech continue to be on the Vice team? He's he's the definition of the bumbling cop. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for this one where he's trying to get his super hardcore revenge against Phil, that it's, he's wearing a leather aviator hat in, inside yeah, that exactly. airplane. For one, the, I can say why because of Zito, because Zito protects him. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for Zito, he would have nothing. <laughs> there i said it ouch melissa sorry we know what's coming <laughs> <laughs> melissa what is your pick for for the our next guest star little richard mm, interesting which is uh. in episode outward the buses don't run mm-hmm. and it's in the beginning intro where they got the roller skating guy <laughs> and he's the preacher and he's like yeah. up there being a televangelist basically <laughs> so i mean i don't think it's that I is think a there's fantastic a better role. Go ahead, but, yeah, i think that's a fantastic open i just wish we could have seen more of them yeah i know exactly that's why i, I can't put him that high up there but, but he's there and he he's little richard mm-hmm. <laughs> and all his <laughs> sparkliness and everything. he kind of has a perma look on his face like what am i doing here <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> john what's your choice for best guest star so my choice for my number three best guest star is Sonny Crockett. I mean, Gary Cole, <laughs> um, who should have been cast Sonny Crockett. And I'm going to maintain that. <laughs> also played the fantastic Jackson Crane in Trust Fun Pirates, but should have been playing Sonny Crockett as well. <laughs> I like how he has to play second fiddle to Sonny and to Glenn Fry. <laughs> he was second choice for yes. both. <laughs> yes. Well, my next pick for guest star is Clarence Williams the Third. 
And I, Melissa was shocked when I chose this one. He is from episode seven, Tale of the Goat. He plays Legba. That's, or that's you... just because I hate that episode with a passion. <laughs> well, you might remember him as Samson. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah, Samson. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give Vice credit for doing a voodoo episode. And Legba, we start off with him in a coffin. He is dead in the beginning <laughs> of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, what's your number two favorite guest I star? went with Dean Stockwell and Bushida. Mm. Bushido, sorry. Mm-hmm. Because he's he's Castillo's best friend. I mean, come on, no, I'm just <laughs> well, I mean, I love that episode. So, And he's also like CIA badass who basically comes in there and ruins their whole sting in the he's, beginning. <laughs> he's able to ruin their sting at the public bathroom at the beach. <laughs> and make them look like fools. <laughs> and, and Castillo spends the whole time like, don't mess with him. Like, don't you approach him because you guys mm-hmm. are not good enough to, <laughs> to handle him. How are they not good enough if Zito was buried under the sand no one knew he was once there. again zito is way better okay <laughs> i personally think that zito is a better cop than trudy there i said it <laughs> ouch ouch okay ouch john what's your number two guest star my number two guest star is tommy chong because mm-hmm. jumbo and fluffy were two of the most fantastic <laughs> characters and i, I wish that they would reappear that. again in an episode even though i know they won't <laughs> It was their combination was great because uh, now all credit to Tommy Chong, but Fluffy she was the really best. made that that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the airplane junkyard where they live. They're shooting rats. They're uh, ripping off drug dealers. Big I mean, come on, they, they were just yeah, they were just the perfect duo character. And I don't know why they weren't used in future episodes. It seems to me like Tommy Chong might be down to do that again and again. I think he's down to do pretty much everything that they ask him to do. (laughs) I don't think he says no to a lot. Just saying. (laughs) My number one favorite guest star from season two. And and John, this might have some crossover with you. So I'm not 100% sure. My number one favorite guest star in season two is the one and only Bill Russell. They actually landed a Hall of Fame NBA player who wasn't just a bit part. He was in the main character through the entire episode, and they did not plan well for having an NBA player by putting him in a Miata and then having him be on a yacht. (laughs) For the record, he was a way better actor than the the other basketball basketball player. player. We won't say his name to protect his identity, but... Well, he was also a way better basketball player than the other basketball player. He was better at everything. (laughs) Melissa, what's your number one favorite guest I went with John. John Heard on the one-way ticket. Mm. He flew his plane off into the sunset, and we never saw him again. No, he was a bad. Oh, oh, oh. He was a, he was good as a bad lawyer. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, like a bad guy, and he had a conscience. And that's a. Good, I love that episode. So mm-hmm. I like that. That's a good. I love that episode. If it only for the fact that Sunny rolls around shooting at <laughs> targets while they fly the plane over, and you keep thinking that somehow they're going to meet He's together. He's so sweaty while he flies that plane I know. too. <laughs> He's sweating it. But yeah, no, I like that episode, and I like. I thought he was good in that. He was believable. Mm-hmm. He was a good actor. John, what's your number one favorite guest star from season two? Frank Zappa. I mean, ah. he's a freaking pirate. <laughs> he's a freaking pirate. Okay. And he's a pirate king. Um, and he also gave us the fantastic term weasel dust. <laughs> and also he plugged his nose and jumped off the boat when they told him, like, get off. He's like, okay, plug my nose, get off. <laughs> Yeah, he was another one that was a huge surprise. Like when you think Frank Zappa, you don't think serious actor. And he did he did a good job. Like his character he was did actually a good really job. Good. Yeah. But the guest stars don't stop here. One, we would love to hear what your favorite guest stars are from season two. Please email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what your favorite guest stars are. Really quick, I think we can go around and just do a quick honorable mention, just to name a few others that almost maybe made our lists, but didn't quite pa- pass yeah. the cut. Exactly, exactly. Because there were so, so many that appeared in this season. And I wanted to give a special shout out to Luis Guzman, who appeared as two different characters in season two. <laughs> That's acting. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange right there. <laughs> what about Nathan Lane being mm-hmm. an evil rapist no, <laughs> yeah surprise <laughs> surprise <laughs> not only was he a comedian that wasn't good he was also an evil rapist no. 
I think Michael Richards surprised me as one of our better criminals. He mm-hmm. was scary. He um, was a scary criminal, <laughs> which you did, was, I didn't think he, he could be. <laughs> I think Richard Pelzer would have made my list if he had played Detective John Munch. I think he would have made <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I would have made it. <laughs> one I, last one that I'll say out there is Michael Bay. He's in there somewhere. Somewhere. You got you got like a magnifying glass and a lot of time. You can stop in that episode, free verse, and look for him in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to throw it out there because I'm a big fan of jazz and blues. Miles Davis playing Ivory Jones, the uh, pimp hotel keeper in Junk Love. <laughs> he was one I of those people give where I was some. like, that's Miles Davis. Yeah, I, know. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm like, I don't know who Miles Davis is. Whatever. Cool. Even Jan Hammer got into the act playing a wedding singer, which is incredibly believable. I think um, he was just playing himself. Like, I think if they would have talked to him, he would have exactly. been like, I'm John, I'm John Hammer. That's me. I don't even need a I name. I think if he hadn't gotten hired by Vice, he might still be a wedding singer. <laughs> Well, now that we've talked about our favorite guest stars, we did hint at some of our favorite episodes in that run where they make where these guest stars make an appearance. So let's do the same thing. Let's do our top three, third to number three to one, our favorite episodes from season two. And John, why don't you kick us off on this round? Right. So my number three is it actually is a tie between Dutch Oven and Bought and Paid For. I will admit I was a little hard on Paid For because I wasn't the very, very end of it. I thought got a little silly, but I did appreciate that both Gina and Trudy got their own episodes because they are incredibly underutilized characters uh, and they were very vice related things. They were about drugs and hookers that also tied in with their personal lives. Both episodes had fantastic music. Let's face it, Dutch Oven is it's just my probably my favorite all time name of an episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, you can't beat that. Well, there's a lot of crossover here because mostly your number three is bought and paid for. I also love. I mean, I love that episode. It's a, it's a really strong episode that actually has some. It's no, there's no silliness to it. Let's get on mm-hmm. it. There's no silliness, but it also has some great uh, El DeBarge music too, mm-hmm. and it's you know there's there's nothing wrong with that episode at all. I can't say, and it is. It's I love that it's a Gina episode we got a trudy mm-hmm. episode and that's a gina episode and it's a strong gina episode it's not like we just gave you this episode and we're just gonna it's no fluff to it at all and they really harass her friend too mm-hmm. like the the police harass yes. her too yes and i like that mm-hmm. there's uh my favorite part about that episode is that there's truth to it right mm-hmm. that you i mean i love castillo but he is he's like what you would expect to run into in the police department like well we don't really just take her word against his and yeah. there's no proof yeah. so we're not gonna do anything about yeah. it you know Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and you see, my number three episode is the Dutch oven oh, because weird. Trudy <laughs> finally gets her due. Yep, <laughs> she gets her her episode, uh-huh. and it never happens again. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does get one. Uh-huh. It's it's the Nugman episode, I think. Or I mean, couple we, here and there. For as much stuff as we talk about with Trudy, I I we have to point out as being a favorite that she is in an episode where it's not her doing paperwork; True. it's her doing actual yes. work and getting it on too. <laughs> Yeah, and and she's getting a little you know, sweaty. No, I'm just there, there's <laughs> some serious stuff to it too. All right, John. Well, what's your number two episode from season two? I am gonna go with Sons and Lovers. John Leguizamo, uh, uh, Baby Tubs. Angela returns with Sweaty Tubs flashbacks, <laughs> and then it ends with a bunch of stuff blowing up in in Vice fashion. I, I love John Leguizamo. Uh, I was intrigued by baby tubs and tubs being a big, uh, having baby mama drama. I think it was fantastic. I, I, I'm still put it post putting up uh, wanted posters trying to <laughs> find baby who tubs. played baby tubs. Uh, we, we will locate Tubbs' son before the end of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, what's your second episode from season Me two? Me and John must have like got together and made our list together and didn't even know it because mine is Sons and Lovers also. Oh. Yeah. But you are, though, like I know, John, you love the episode. Melissa. You have dreams about that episode of Sons and <laughs> like, Lovers. Like, why didn't it end a different way? No. <laughs> why? Why? No, that, that that one crushes me. Like, it does. It really does. Like, later on, I, still, I think about that episode when it goes further on. And I think about, like, there's times where you think, like, oh, Tubbs is finally happy. Nope. He's never happy. <laughs> 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 Spoiler alert, he's never happy again. No, no, it, it, it's that that episode really got me. So it, mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite episodes, but also the most irritating to me because, you know, I have strong feelings about that. 
Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of irritating, because that's my number two pick is payback because it gives me Uh, just another 30 seconds of saying, why doesn't Crockett have more repercussions out of this whole setup that that Frank Zappa does? And he ends and there's no one's hunting for him. He shouldn't be in in Miami Vice anymore. (laughs) That's what you think. He he has pirates who are after him. Yeah. And there's no, he's just, he kills a police officer on a boat on the, and, and the criminal out on a boat in the middle of the ocean. And then the episode just ends. Why? They, you don't want to see the paperwork he had to do for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many internal affairs appointments he had to go to and sweat in for that. <laughs> but seriously, that episode's great because Frank Zappa is really good. There's all this mystery around what's happening with Crockett, why someone is trying to hunt him down. We start off with having a suicide at the jail that's a setup for him, just trying to ruin him. Yeah. The dirty cop. By, by the like, boxer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's through with. That's why I went straight to the ending, because beginning to end, that is a great episode. Just the last 30 seconds you needed to be a little bit different yes. so that it was so it, the storyline would make more sense. But otherwise, it's a great episode. John, what's your number one favorite episode from season two? My number one favorite episode is The Fix. Bill Russell playing the judge. Kramer's being the bad guy. It's a heavy episode. And then Bill Russell kills himself at the end of the episode in front of Crockett. Then you can even go back to the beginning where we have the zoo shootout and Ortega gets off scot-free. And I mean, on top of all of that, we have my favorite band, Oingo Boingo's drummer, Johnny (laughs) Hernandez, in the episode, uh, along with Miss Doubtfire's Harvey Firestein. I love everything about that episode. My Oingo Boingo. (laughs) My favorite Oingo Boingo. My Oingo Boingo drummer. (laughs) Melissa, what's your favorite episode from season two? I think you can probably guess what my favorite is, but Bushido. Yes, yes. (laughs) Because I love me some ninja skills. (laughs) here's what i learned from that episode is is that the quiet castillo we saw even though there was we had a two-part episode in season one we see which is one of my other favorites you do not fuck with castillo nope he will hide in the ceiling (laughs) and drop down and cut your ass right (laughs) and then after he's cut he's still like okay let's go i'm ready i'll just hold my side like this don't worry i got this no i mean it's a great episode because you get some background to him you get Mm -hmm. to see my favorite part about that episode is that you get to see that he's actually a real person Mm -hmm. and that he loved dean stockwell like his Mm -hmm. brother and he is it basically Dean Stockwell forces him to murder him because mm-hmm. he's dying. He doesn't know it at the time. He can figure it out later on. Later on, he figures out that Dean Stockwell is dying of cancer. And he like basically forces him to murder him and then tells him, like, take care of my family. <laughs> but I mean, I love it because you get to see his real feelings and they, that he has feelings and he's got this past and he is a badass, mm-hmm. even though he's quiet. <laughs> but it follows the rules. (laughs) (laughs) Well, my number one favorite episode is going to be a shock to both of you. My favorite episode is definitely Miami with Ted Nugent. I can't believe that. (laughs) I'm shocked. (laughs) That is an evil episode. And it's not because of Ted Nugent, but because of the woman that Don Johnson or Sonny Crockett falls head over heels or for. Or Don Johnson, yeah. maybe. We don't know. <laughs> uh, he can't help himself. He takes her back to bang at the safe house. They and... don't bang. We've gone over this. <laughs> <laughs> he knows They would have married. banged if it was Gary Cole. <laughs> well, whatever. Maybe Gary Cole doesn't have standards that, that uh, Sonny clearly has. <laughs> but she is evil. And yeah, she's right evil. from the very beginning. So first of all, we have that long sequence in the beginning where they're like, poolside the and it's all hot. Her body. Yeah, and he comes. She comes over and pulls the ice out of his glass, and suddenly she's got that like uh, she's just drooling all over. And from that, he watching. got chlamydia. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, got the herp. <laughs> he got the herpes from that they didn't want to talk about it but <laughs> but by the end you see the twist and then you get the brooding crockett at the end as he walks on the because beach and he's never gonna like be happy and sunny you'd be so much happier if you just spend that time with your son instead of banging hookers I know. he didn't even know where son is <laughs> it was the epitome for of miami vice for me because they because of the twist at the end and because the woman is the one that's actually setting it all up and the ted nugent was just the dumb muscle behind the brains and there was a lot of that in this season anyway where there was a front 
to who the brains really were behind the scenes. And so, and then this episode, that episode was directed by Don Johnson. It was the epitome of Miami Vice. It was Vice mm-hmm. all the way through, including yeah. the director. That sums up our best guest stars and favorite episodes from season two. So let's go over and talk about the music. All right, so we kept this uh, in our traditional format where we're going to talk about the music in the music segment. So what we've done here is we've picked out three songs or three music moments from season two where we can point out our favorite time because music is so important to Miami Vice. Melissa, why don't you kick us off this time on our three to one, three to one favorite moments of music in Miami Vice season two. Okay, so my number three is El DeBarge playing live in um bought and paid for mm-hmm. and it's uh you wear it well he put just two songs but you wear it well but my favorite <laughs> this moment gets me because it's in the middle of his performance that Tubbs and the girl decide to just go up on the stage <laughs> yeah. and walk on stage. they have to walk across the stage <laughs> in order to get upstairs yeah and he's like singing <laughs> it to her specifically he, like goes over to her with the microphone and he's like singing to her <laughs> that seems like that's unlikely to happen in a regular club but hey maybe if you're on Miami Vice it does but yes I mean, obviously, I love his music anyway. So mm-hmm. I think it, but it's the epitome of Miami Vice, right? Mm-hmm. It's like that clubbish music and him playing it and he, the clothes he's wearing and his band in the background. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, yes, that is my number three. Well, my number three music moment is Roadhouse Blues by The Doors in the episode Back, to, Back in the World. And this is where Tubbs and Crockett go to talk to Dakota who's played by Yvonne. Mm-hmm. This is the episode where the entire soundtrack is nothing but the doors. Yeah. That's that's the only music. Yes. And this was my favorite moment because Yvonne was actually really great as a guest star in that episode. And the music was just fitting throughout the entire run. John, what what's your number three moment? My number three is the doors, the entire episode of Back <laughs> in the World. <laughs> the whole episode. Um, yeah. So I am right there with you, Dominic. The whole episode and the fact that the music is basically a soundtrack for Sonny Crockett's like time in the Vietnam. You've heard of like Credence Clearwater songs used in Vietnam movies and Mm -hmm. like uh, House of the Rising Sun and some other songs like that. It's amazing how well the doors work in that same period. And the doors, I mean, they're just fantastic. So to get a whole episode of just doors music, I mean, you couldn't ask for more. So continuing with the theme where we share a lot of our favorite moments whether it be episodes or guest stars or music and john me and you like we saw that whole episode with back in the world where it was so key that the doors and this that was kind of odd too that the doors were it was the only band that was through an entire episode once again like minds think alike <laughs> melissa and what you and your nut number two pick my number two was dire straits brothers in arms from out where the buses don't run and surprise john your number two pick is brothers in arms dire straits out where the buses don't run yeah i think so- that, I, that's I, I, the epitome of a perfect song for that moment, mm-hmm. like where he dra- he drags him out there and he's you really don't know what the hell's going on when you're watching it either. Like for the first time when you watch that episode, you're like, I don't know why he's bringing them out here. I don't know what's going on. What are they walking into an ambush or what? Does he really have somebody in there? Yeah. You don't know. And then the, the music playing is perfect. And then when you come to find out that, no, it's a body in the wall. Mm-hmm. It's just like. Yeah. I don't know. I think that was yeah. the perfect song. You And you also get a little bit of an ode to the night driving scene from the first season, the In the Air Tonight. You get that same kind of type of ambiance. The fact that they use like almost all eight minutes of the song is just, I mean, it's just a great song, a great band, and just a great scene. The, and like everything just fits together perfectly in like, like Vice fashion you know? which is which is really interesting because none of us picked out where the buses don't run as our favorite episode from season two and i think it's because it's it is it's the best episode from season two but none of us wanted to pick it because it's just unilaterally seen as being the best episode it just comes out of nowhere yeah. there it's totally different he is totally out of his mind the music the guest stars, the storyline is all fantastic. And that's where I wanted to, to bring this up, but why it was it was good that you guys both picked a song from that episode. Because we all picked different episodes because we held on to little things here and there. But end to end, the best episode and probably one of the best episodes in the history of Ice is Out Where the Buses Don't Run. Yeah, I agree. It definitely is one of the best yeah, episodes. Yeah, and it was throughout. definitely be yeah, and it was definitely on my honorable mention list. Uh, like you said, I wanted to talk about some of the other episodes because I think that episode is just uh I, I think it's 
pretty much regarded by fans as like one of the most moving episodes of the series. Or it's like, like uh, Evan Annie. in season two, where you just know like that's the episode. Yep. That's the one from the season that you remember. It made the TV guide list like of best episodes ever. Mm-hmm. I know that. So like top 100 episodes of anything ever. Yeah. It's on there. My number two pick from season two is Bob O'Reilly by The Who, which is another song from Out Where the Buses Don't Run. It's the opening song as the man roller skates down the boardwalk down to his short, short <laughs> friends to buy some drugs. A little Richard <laughs> preaching yep. in the park. <laughs> there you go. And Bob O'Reilly yep. is at 12 playing at full volume in the background <laughs> as he skates down the boardwalk. And, and it's such a fitting song for that open. You know, mm-hmm. I think the only thing that kept me from from making my list was every time I hear it, I think of the beginning of CSI in New York <laughs> and Gary Sinise. And I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> Not Gary Sinise, but if it was Mark Harmon, you'd be all over it. (laughs) Damn right. (laughs) Well, Melissa, what is your number one song from season two? Okay, so my number one song is Phil Collins' A Long, Long Way to Go, even though it makes me sad from Sons and Lovers where he's going to get ready for his his baby funeral. (laughs) And it's even worse because his baby's not dead. I know. Oh, God, they're so cruel. They have to bury everybody and they're not even dead. No, she's not even dead. No. It's so sad when he's like in empty boxes. <laughs> I know. Where he's in the office and he's wearing those sunglasses and they're all like waiting for him. It's too much for me. I, it really is. It gets me. <laughs> it gets you right in the heart. <laughs> right in the feels. Right in the feels. Oh, yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Well, my number one music moment. We'll leave John's for last. He's our he's our music king. Guru, so we'll set really. him up for his honorable mentions and then the number one best music moment from season two because there's not anyone that knows the best music it's season John, two. All it's the John that's done. invested many hours this season in bringing you the best music from season yes. two. So I'll leave him there for his, for his honorable mentions and the best music from season two. I, but and in homage to John, my number one music moment is Creedence Clearwater Revival. Who did not make an appearance in Miami Vice in season two. <laughs> but instead, we t- decided to talk about them instead of Roger Daltrey. <laughs> Honorable mention. We already talked about him. We, <laughs> we, already got, we already talked about the who even in this segment. <laughs> <laughs> so my number one music moment isn't what? from Miami Vice. It's from our own podcast <laughs> and John talking about John Fogarty and Creedence Clearwater Revival. So John, what do you have for us in your last moments here of season two and the best music? My my number one song, and this is specifically for how it was used in the series. Uh, well, I should say especially for how it was used in the series uh, is "That Smell" by Leonard Skinner. It was in Trust Fund Pirates. It was in the scene where Jackson. Crane goes to the crack house. He's looking for his friend and the song's playing and it just, it fit the scene. It fit what was going on in the scene. You know, it it was just the perfect song to use at that point in the episode. And then when I did the research and you find out that the song was written about uh, one of the members who, because they crashed their car in a drunk driving accident. Mm -hmm. And then you find out later that another one of the members gets in another drunk driving accident, becomes paralyzed. And then after the, the reunion band is put together, like part of his plea service is every time they play that song, they wheel him out stage to do a a drunk driving like (laughs) announcement, you know, (laughs) just the history that song has with the band and how they used it in the episode and just the heaviness of the song. It, it actually changed the way the song, because uh, I'm a big Leonard Skinner fan, but, uh, you know, if you'd asked me b- before doing the research and before, I mean, seeing it in the show, what my favorite Leonard Skinner songs would be, it probably wouldn't have made the list. But I definitely like that song a lot more now. It, it's, it's probably definitely in my top five now of Leonard Skinner's songs. Mm-hmm. Just because of, of picturing it in that vice way, you know, uh, in that context. I feel like like just it, just because how, with the history of the band and with how they used it in the show, I think that that smell by Leonard Skinner got to be my number one. That was like because it was so late into the season for me. It's just like icing on the cake for what they did in music this season because there was so many deep cuts. And I know you have some 
some honorable mentions that you wanted to say before we got out of here? Uh, I want to give an honorable mention to Suicide Tendencies Institutionalized, which mm-hmm. uh, they performed live in the episode of Freeverse because that's a very fun scene with the poet in the club and they're getting rowdy. Yeah, I almost um, picked that one as one of my favorites, but I was mm-hmm. like, eh. <laughs> that That is definitely a good moment in the music. And then, I, you know, I, I got to give some love to ZZ Top Sharp Dressed Man uh, in the episode Whatever Works, just because it's a great song, great band. And he was well in the episode, so, uh, and my fellow beard enthusi- enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go keep our format here, and let's go talk about our final thoughts on this season two of Miami Vice before we get deep into the troubles of season three. Hey, there's no trouble. <laughs> So let's go around and give our final thoughts on this season two of Miami Vice. And I'll, and I'll kick us off because there's a couple things that I that really stand out to me and what I loved about season two. And there's one thing that I'm really looking forward to in season three. So season two was really good. And it took the quote unquote Miami high life to the max. And it's really, as I mentioned a couple times in this in this episode, that the expectation I have of Miami Vice where it's all about the high life and it's about big drug deals and giant yachts and big parties like season two really really lived up to that we did get a lot of dead hookers there was like a trend that that we fell into in season two where it was we get introduced to a character and then they're dead by the end because they don't arrest nobody <laughs> my advice doesn't arrest no one they, everyone gets killed by by the end hey they're saving money all right <laughs> yeah and one of my continued the trend of witnesses dying <laughs> um consistently I, I think we might have had one make it through uh I, I i believe the poet made it through the entire episode but that's about had it. more than one you guys have terrible memories <laughs> <laughs> but i am really looking forward to season three because there's we've talked about a shift and dick wolf coming in blah blah blah, blah but i am really really looking forward to season three and what's going to happen with our B team. Cause I, I, I think I know what's going to happen and I know it's going to be sad. And it's going to be the first time that we've had an episode to go with the heat where we have to deal with a real serious episode that we can't just laugh our way through. So I'm really looking forward to season three. <laughs> oh, you're looking forward to me crying. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, what are your final thoughts? Well, I mean, you all, I, I mean, I've said it several times that season three is my favorite season. I've watched this show many times, many, many times. <laughs> um, I love season two. I'm not going to, I don't complain. I have nothing to complain about in, in season two. I think it's, it is a really good mix of the silliness. But like I've said before, I don't like this. That silliness is not my favorite part. Like the goofy, you know, I love the decadence. I love the fast cars. I like the lifestyle. And that back then, the stuff, some of the stuff is probably to you guys looks crazy. But to me, it was like, wow, that was really was popular back then. That really was this. And, you know, you can see the trends and stuff like that. Um, it had a lot of really good guest stars. But um, I just know that coming in season three, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of more guest stars, like big name people. So I'm mm-hmm. ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. to. I mean, obviously, I like season two. I like that there was more serious stuff and more strong moments. And not, uh, not, and I don't say strong moments, but more serious moments where you see that, like, it's not all just like fun and games and mm-hmm. they take their job seriously. And yes, I mean, you guys are always joking about like how they don't let, and no one survives and they murder everybody. But there was like a couple, at least, you know, a couple episodes here and there where Tubbs got to be really serious and care about things. And mm-hmm. he, sh- he showed that he does take his job serious and Crockett too, like, yeah. you know, where he tried to like relate to people being a father. I'll, and I'll being give a it to you. I'll give it to you. They, they didn't murder an entire town in Florida. This I don't time. care about that town in Florida. <laughs> I've said it several times. <laughs> I don't care except for that kid. I'm glad she got out. Okay. And that she don't have to, she doesn't have to live in that town in Florida anymore because it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, John, what, what are your final thoughts on this season? You know, I loved the continuation of the guest stars. Music continued to be fantastic. Though got a little overwhelming at times, especially uh, Prodigal Son, the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, um, it was a movie. <laughs> I mean, just keep it to three songs, guys. Like, come on. But it, And I, I love the fact that Gina and Trudy each got their own episode. And we got a little bit more 
into the personal lives in, in of each of the vice members. We got a Castillo episode where we saw a bit of his personal life. Trudy got an episode we saw her dating life and stuff. Gina, same thing. We even got a little bit of the B team going to see 101 Dalmatians and being on <laughs> goofy game shows. <laughs> the thing that frustrated me about season two were the loose ends. It was Mm -hmm. knowing that we're never going to see Tubbs Jr. again. Knowing that we're never going to get a a wrap up for what what happened with the evil pirates hunting Tubbs. (laughs) Uh, I mean, hunting Crockett, sorry. The fact that we are never going to know the name of Izzy Moreno's little sidekick. (laughs) That just drives me nuts. I'm going to miss Charlie Barnett. Hopefully we don't get too, too serious in the season three but i am looking forward to dick wolf because i am a fan of the law and orders and stuff and so otherwise i think uh season two was a fantastic season and well that's gonna do it for season two of miami vice that's gonna do it for us this week we hope you enjoyed this episode we hope you enjoyed season two of go with the heat be sure to come back next week when we kick off season three with the the unbelievable guest star of Liam Neeson right out of the gate. I love this episode. Yeah. (laughs) So we start strong in season three. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to check out the website, GoWithTheHeat.com. We would love, love, love to hear from you. What are your favorite moments, guest stars, or episodes from season three emails go with the heat at gmail.com if you go to that website go with the heat.com click on about us you can find all the ways that you can contact us individually too i'm sure we would all love to hear from you on twitter on uh, what your favorite moments are from season two that's gonna do it for us this week we'll be back with season three next week and maybe even a surprise guest star on the show we'll catch y'all next time bye pals